Hello, everybody. I'm TV's Jimmy Pardo, and I know this for a fact. Chuck Norris sang the 1982 country hit, You Took His Hand and Broke My Heart. I also know for a fact that right after that, Chuck took his own hand, broke some two-by-fours, 75 bricks, and an ice sculpture. I'm Tammy Pescatelli, and I know for sure that Burt Reynolds sang the top 100 song called Let's Do Something Cheap and Superficial. Now, he said the song wasn't about his relationship, so what was it about? His hair club for men? <laughs> Hi, I'm Eric Roberts, and this is funny, but true. Kevin Costner made Dances with the Wolves, as we all know. He also made an album called Down on the Prairie. Now, I don't want you down on Costner, but it should have been called Sings with Walruses. <laughs> Who's got it right? You'll find out tonight on Balderdance. Starring... Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice I, I feel I'm getting heckled by stars. Nice. <laughs> I feel like a magician's assistant. Welcome to Balderdash. It's such a great show. We kind of have to figure out who's lying and who's telling the truth. And it's a really good warm-up for, you know, Election Day in November. So it's good you're here. We have a great panel. Going to make you laugh a lot tonight. Show some love for Jimmy Pardo. <laughs> Tommy Pescatelli. Fabulous Eric Roberts. Woohoo! Nice panel. Now, it was Tammy who had the true answer to our first question tonight. Yes, Burt Reynolds did have a record, and then he was just knocked right off the charts by 50 Cent. So, <laughs> <laughs> our other two celebs were just full of balderdash. That's your job tonight. You guys got to figure out who's telling the truth, who's full of balderdash. A correct balderdash wager pays off at one to one. A correct bet on the truth pays off at two to one. Going to start you both off with 250 points so you can make those bets. And um, to help you decide how much to wager, tonight, I can tell you that our first category is, oh, look at that, the Sears catalog, the Sears catalog. So lock in those bets and choose either truth or the big B dash, as we like to call it. Hey, Ted, how you doing? Good, how are you? Nice to see you. I'm fine, thanks. What'd you wager? Great. I wagered 150 on truth. 150 on the truth. Hello, Julie. Hello. Hello. What'd you bet? I bet 200 on Balderdash. Okay, those are the wagers, panel. Here we go. We spent the entire Balderdash budget on an actual Sears catalog from the fall of 1900. There were some amazing products back then, including one of these three goodies. And we will begin with AMC's own Jimmy Pardo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Fox people. Here's the deal with the, the Sears catalog. My no. mother is a department store historian, Elaine. And back in 19... She told me this directly on the telephone earlier today. Uh, back in 1900, uh, if you were uh, suffering from brain fatigue or railroad back, you go to the Sears catalog <laughs> and order up Dr. Dewey's Blood Renovating Nerve Tonic. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fool this, Robert. The secret ingredient, Elaine? Cocoa leaves. Yeah. Which explains why it was so popular with silent movie stars. It also explains what happened to Roebuck. It's just seen. <laughs> That's the better joke. I'm sorry, it just came off the... Hey, Gorgeous Jimmy says joke. that it's Dr. Dewey's blood-renovating nerve tonic. What does the fabulous Tommy Pescatelli say? Well, in the 1900s, if you're looking for a romantic gift, you know what would be the best thing? A prefab house. And you can get that right out of the Sears catalog. Really? It was a great gift, just hard to wrap. That's yeah. really good. It's hard to wrap. Perfect. Unless you're 50 cent. Okay, <laughs> it is a prefab house. And the fabulous Eric Roberts. Tell us about the show you're on right now. You can see Eric on Less Than Perfect every week, can't we? And that wouldn't be you, because you're more than perfect. What about the Sears catalog? By the way, that was a good bluff. <laughs> Sears, very simple. Mm -hmm. Sears, one, I, either Sears or Roebuck, I forget which one, but he's very Catholic. Oh. And he didn't want anybody to be cremated, so he had a thing. So they sold tombstones for $9.98. True story, bank on me. Wow, tombstones wow. for nine dollars. So you could get a tombstone in the Sears catalog. Tammy uh, says it's a prefab house, and Jimmy says it's a uh, renovating nerve tonic. Uh, truth, balderdash, pick a star. Okay.
Okay, Ted, who'd you go with? I went with uh, Jimmy Pardo. Ah, Good call, for Ted. the truth, you Absolutely. believed him. Okay, then. And Julie, you're looking for Balderdash. Who did you go with? I went with Tammy. That was really, really good explanation. It I don't think it's true. Okay. okay, well, let's see what you can get in the Sears catalog on here in my 800. Oh, boy, that's good news for Julie. Excellent news for Julie. Unfortunately, Jimmy was not telling the truth, so uh, it's going to cost you a little bit. Julie, you are up to 450. Ted, you're down to 100, but the night is young. It's anybody's game. Come on back. We'll play some more. This is Ted McDonald from... Hey, Ted! I'm from Costa Mesa, and Costa I'm an Mesa. engineering technician um, for a computer hardware manufacturer. And in my spare time, I ride mountain bikes and walk my dog, Max. Very nice. We love dogs. Say hi to Max. And this is Julie Huffman. Julie. Yeah, where are you from? I'm from Canyon Country, California, and I'm a sixth grade teacher, oh. and when I'm not teaching, I coach kickboxing for adults. Oh. Wow. Wow. Teaching frustration. Well, we're going to up the ante in this round, of course. We're going to add 500 points to each of your scores. Ted, that'll bring you to 600. Julie, you're at 950. You have to bet at least 250 points on each of these questions. And the first category is government projects. Government projects. Lock in those wagers. Truth or I thought all government projects were balderdash, but okay, we'll see. What'd you wager, Ted? I bet truth for 500 points. That's a big one. Okay, two to one payoff. Could be big. Julie? 600 on Balderdash. 600 on Balderdash. Panel, if you've ever wondered how our government spends our hard-earned tax dollars, listen to these three stories because only one is real. And we will start with www.tommypescatelli.com. I have the real story right okay. here. The Treasury Department wanted to see how the American public would react to putting female faces on the paper money. And, it, you know, they had the whole thing that... <laughs> They used Eric's hair. Oh. They had lipstick and eyeshadow and everything. And then they said no, that the American public wouldn't go for that. And but if they want to use bright colors, we could always use Boy George on the money. Okay. <laughs> 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 they tested female faces on the paper money. What does uh, the male face of Eric Roberts say? Well, this particular administration mm -hmm. did because you know they they really hone in on what's important in in our world and they did a uh, study on why government employees untwist so many paper clips if I, if I were the president I would do a study on something about the psyche like why people why people photocopy their rear ends okay can we Jimmy. I am literally hypnotized Jimmy, by Eric Roberts. I was <laughs> he didn't make sense, I didn't make sense, and we're hoping you'll save us. Jump in there. I wouldn't bet on me right now All if right, I were you. All right, well, that's the end of the show. Drive safely. Thanks for coming. <laughs> it's been a fun game, hasn't it, Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I know this to be true because I heard it on the Art Bell radio show. <laughs> <laughs> the government funded the SETI project, which was, uh, SETI stood for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. SETI. SETI, that's exactly right. What these gentlemen would do, they would uh, set up these gigantic satellite dishes mm -hmm. so they could listen in outer space for alien life form. Budgets were cut, however, Elaine, because all they ended up getting were late night infomercials and reruns of Hogan's Heroes in Spanish. <laughs> Which proved the point, Nazis are funny in any language. <laughs> Jimmy Pardo says it was the search for ETs, and uh, Tommy says it was female faces on paper money, and Eric says it was why people like to untwist paper clips. You are looking for the truth. You are looking for the Balderdash Project. Pick a star. Come on, Julie. Okay, Ted, who did you believe? I went with Eric Roberts for the truth. For the truth. It sounds just stupid enough to be true. Well, there you go. We are talking government. Okay. Julie, who did you not believe? Well, I actually chose Eric Roberts for Balderdash because the government's crazy, but I'm not sure if it's that crazy. Oh, well, <laughs> you haven't been reading the papers lately. Okay, <laughs> let's see what the true study was. Oh, my goodness, it's Jimmy Pardo, which is very good for you because...
if he was full of ball the best. Unfortunately, he wasn't full of the truth, so that will cost you. You're down to 100. Julie, you're up to 1550. Ted, you're going to have to bet it all because you don't have the minimum, so it will be 100, your bet. But you can still choose truth or balderdash. And the next category is... Veterinary Miracles. Lock in those wagers and choose truth or balderdash. Okay, Ted, you bet 100 points on? Truth, I need the double or nothing on. Yes, you need the double or nothing. You do, Julie? 1,000 on balderdash. Oh, big bet, here we go. Veterinarians have done many caring and heartwarming things for animals all over the country. See if you can tell which of these amazing stories is true. Eric Roberts. Well, I know this story firsthand because it's on CNN, it's on C-SPAN, all those kind of stations. And it's about a cat who lived in Pennsylvania and it kept getting lost. Obviously a retarded cat. And, uh, <laughs> and the guy who owned the cat took it to the vet and he got a special kind of implant chip put in it where it would receive a signal that it was getting close to home and get louder so the cat understood it was heading home. The problem with this, however, was every time the owner pushed it, his neighbor's TV would go on and the garage door would open. Oh. <laughs> okay, Eric Roberts says that cats uh, can get an implant and I guess Anna Cole Smith's cat probably has that. Uh, do you Yes, what, uh, what lovely veterinary miracle can you tell us? About? Elaine, this is a miracle, and I know it to be true. And Ted, pay attention here because it's about a dog, and I know you have lovely Max at home that you want. <laughs> My cousin Scott is a vet, uh, so I know this to be true. Uh, he's not a veterinarian, he just went to war. Um, <laughs> Cute. But he told me this story one night over a case of beer. He uh, told me about a dog that was in an accident and they did some experimental surgery where they put a battery-powered motor in its hip. Mm. Good news, bad news. Good news, now the puppy can walk up to 10 miles a day. Bad news, he risks electrocution every time he goes to lick himself. <laughs> but it's worth it, ain't it? It is worth okay, it. Okay, Jimmy Parker says the dog has a battery-powered hip. And Tommy Pescatelli, what's your story? Uh, he's wrong. There's an he? owl in Wisconsin that has cataracts, and he keeps flying into trees and flying into these windows. And this veterinarian felt really sorry for him, so he gave him contacts. And I don't even have an HMO, and this guy has <laughs> contacts for his owl. Ain't that something? A bird gets contact lenses. Okay, Tommy Pascatelli says that a vet gave an owl contact lenses. Eric Roberts says that a cat got a chip implanted to find its way home. And Jimmy Pardo says that, uh, Tommy, don't worry. Uh, and it was a dog who got a battery-powered motor in its hips. You were looking for truth. You were looking for balderdash. Pick a star. Ted, where did your search for truth take you? I went with Eric Roberts. I yes. think it's called Low Cat. Low Cat. There you go. Excellent. Wow. You can that club your cat, cool. too, but they don't like that. Yeah, that's great. Okay, Julie, you were uh, looking for Balderdash. Well, I picked Jimmy for Balderdash because I think I've heard about the cat as well. Oh, so, oh, great. So you thought that was true, the cat. Okay, let's see uh, what this vet did to who. Oh, my gosh. The owl got the Pretty darn good for you, Julie. You are now up to 2,000 points. Ted, you're down to zero, but tell me, Pascatelli has some relatives who are going to lend you some points for a 18% fact <laughs> We'll be right back after this for the big determining ball to that. As is back, here again is Elaine Boothler. This work cut out for him. Thank goodness we're giving you each a thousand points. Ted, you now have a thousand points. Don't spend it all in one place. Uh, Julie, you're at three thousand points. Uh, you've got to bet at least half your bank on this one. At least half, and you're looking for the truth only. Category. What's going on here? What's going on here? Looking for the truth only. And as you know, in this round, we don't reveal your wagers until the end. So, take a look at this unusual picture. And the question is... <laughs> what's going on here? We will start with Jimmy Pardo. Elaine, I love music. <laughs> wow, I want to see this work. Yeah, I, uh, I will go to any concert uh, at any time, anywhere. Mm -hmm. You can call me up and go, hey, want to go to that show? Yeah, who's this? I'm willing to go to any concert. Wait, okay. this is a scene from the Underwater Music Festival. They hold it every year at, down in the Florida Keys, and it's dynamite. Next year, we're hoping, fingers crossed, Kenny G. 
I'll cross my fingers too. Okay, Jimmy Pardo says it is the Underwater Music Festival. What does Tammy Pescatelli say? It's an underwater wedding. They've been holding weddings at the Dive Center in Maui for more than 20 years. And this is a pretty fancy wedding. Unfortunately for me, if I got married right now, I could only afford an underwater DJ. But <laughs> that's, that's okay. <laughs> what the booze, Eric Roberts, the booze, Okay, Tony Pascatelli yeah. says it's an underwater wedding. Eric Roberts is laughing at that because he thinks he has the true story. Because this, I know both those guys in the front there. This. <laughs> <laughs> you know everybody. No, but I know those guys. Yeah. And this is from the Submerge Shakespeare Company. And uh, they did an underwater production of Miss Summer Night's Dream, and uh, that's Act Two, Scene Four. <laughs> and uh, I saw the new Hamlet last year. The only thing they changed is all the causes of death are now drowning. Oh, sure. <laughs> well, you know, you have to with death. Okay, Eric Roberts says, what's going on in this picture is the Shakespeare in the Sea Festival, and I thought dinner theater was tough. Uh, Tammy says that it's the underwater wedding, and Jibby says it's the underwater music festival. You are looking for truth, and all I can say is good luck. And of course, we don't reveal your bets until we find out what is going on in this picture. Festival. Ted, you really needed this one. How many points did you bet and who did you choose? I bet a thousand points on Jimmy Pardo. Oh, that's yeah. pretty good. That's going to get you 3,000 points. We'll see if it's enough. Julie, did you bet enough and did you bet right? I bet 1,500 points on Jimmy. Well, you did bet enough and that's pretty darn good. You played really well and you came back pretty fast, but just not enough. Did you have a good time? That's good. That's wonderful. Julie, you're the champion. Yay! I know. You get to go to the ball today. You have to pick a star to play the garage with me. Who would you like? I'm going to choose Eric because he's beautiful. Eric's beautiful and smart, too, and he has glasses on, so he knows a lot. Come on, follow me down here. Be right back with the Ball to Dash Garage. Come on back. There's lots more Ball to Dash to come, so stay tuned. This PAX program is brought to you by... John Machida to tell us about the first one. It's a shopping spree at Bloomingdale's. For the latest in fashion for yourself and for your home, visit a Bloomingdale's retail store nationwide or shop online at Bloomingdale's.com. Bloomingdale's like no other store in the world. Like no other store in the world. And here's John Mishita to tell us about today's grand prize. It's a luxury spa getaway. You and a guest will be treated to lunch accommodations at the awe-inspiring Red Mountain Spa set in the Red Rock Cliffs and Canyons of St. George, Utah. Enjoy daily hikes, classes, and activities for all fitness levels, plus healthy gourmet cuisine and an ultra-relaxing spa treatment. For Red Mountain Spa, choose your own adventure. Back to you, Elaine. Oh, boy, oh, boy, you can't lose here tonight. Okay, well, how do you get to that vacation? There are ten letters in the word balderdash. Behind nine of those letters is the Bloomingdale shopping spree. Behind one letter is the spa vacation. You want to narrow down the field a little bit? Yes. Okay, we'll play a game for 45 seconds. I will read you statements that end in total balderdash. You have to correct them to make them true. We'll try one? Okay. Here we go. Henny Penny warned everyone that the sky was partly cloudy. Falling. Yes, the sky was falling. Correct. So if you don't know it, say pass, and then Eric comes and saves you. Okay. And if you don't know it, you say pass, and we'll go on to the next one. For every correct answer, we take away one of the shopping spree letters, getting closer and closer to that vacation. Yeah, got it? Yes. Okie dokie, it's time for the big balderdash barrage. And I said okie dokie on television. Let's put 45 seconds on the clock. And the clock starts now. King Arthur's Palace and Court were known as Studio 54. The Round Table. Camelot. In Casablanca, Claude Rain said, round up the usual cattle. Suspect. Uh, yes, let me finish. The New Colossus is a poem that appears on Lou Ferrigno. Pass. Pass. Statue of Liberty. On The Simpsons, Homer's youngest child is named Sadie. Maggie. Yes. In the U.S. presidential retreat in Maryland is called the Holiday Inn. Pass. Presidential retreat. Say pass. Pass. Camp David. The flavor of the liqueur anisette is sterno. Anisette. Pass. Pass. Licorice. The Razor's Edge was written by Somerset Gillette. Pass. Mom. Yes. In Monopoly, the only railroad is not named after a real ra railroad is Chattanooga Choo Choo. Pass. Pass. Short line. The Beetle that was married to... Uh, that was John Lennon. Well, you got three right and there's a good... Uh, you got... You yeah. yeah. would have had that one, though. You would have had that one, but not fast enough. You know, three right. We're going to take away three balderdash letters. You got good prizes today. Let's see what you've won. Pick a letter. L. L. Let's look behind the L. 
Oh, Bloomingdale's. Yeah. Yahoo! I'll take it. I've gone to Bloomingdale's any time because it's like no other store in the world. Hey, let's see where this spa vacation was. Oh, there it was, right there. Okay, well, Bloomingdale's, I'll go with you. Yeah, we'll have lunch, we'll shop, we'll buy stuff. Did you have a good time? We hope so. We had fun playing tonight. Be kind to animals. Rescued pets make the best pets. That's no balderdash. We'll see you right back here next time.